Hello adventurers! Well, it's going to be Indiana Jones season as a lot more products are coming out right now. Wave 3 of the Hasbro Adventure Series is out now. Uh, Diamond Select Toys is starting to ship some of their Indiana Jones items. So you're going to see gallery dioramas. We, of course, we showed you that awesome uh, vinyl bank of the idol. And now we have the first carded Indiana Jones jumbo figure. So Diamond Select Toys has sent us this great sample of the carded version of Indiana Jones in the jumbo line. Now we showed you that amazing playset that was a SDCC exclusive, and that was the uh, Map Room playset. Uh, some of you complained that it didn't have Map Room Indy. Yes, I would have loved that as well, but everyone still bought it because that thing sold out and it was quite amazing. Uh, Diamond Select uh, Gentle Giant has not done a whole lot of play sets in the Jumbo line. If you're following me on rebelscum.com, you're seeing the Star Wars channel, all the reviews I do. I will talk about the various Jumbo play sets that we've had in the past. We had the Cantina Adventure, which was just cardboard uh, based on that series exclusive Cantina Adventure set. And then we had the uh, purchase of the droids background that wasn't really a playset, but it was uh, in proportion to the figures that came in that three pack of jumbos. So there's only been really cardboard playsets. This was the first non cardboard playset and people loved it. That thing sold through pretty quick. It was hard to get it unless you pre ordered it in that window. Uh, so now we have the wide release version of the Jumbo, and apologies, this is too big for me to put on a wheel and try to show you guys, I won't be able to keep it in frame, but he is featuring the same exact card work, or, or the same exact artwork, the same exact packaging style of the original Indiana Jones and that Kenner line from the Raiders of the Lost Ark, the same picture here. Uh, it doesn't have that little window or sticker here that shows him with the um, sort of action function for when you uh, push his hand down and it shoots back up with the gun or the whip because this does not have that. And from the beginning, Diamond Select was very clear about we're not recapturing that little uh, spring-loaded mechanism from the original figure. Uh, disappointing, but I could understand the mechanics that at a much larger scale is a little bit more difficult, especially when you're trying to keep the price at where it is. He does have the same accessories though. So you can see the, the whip here uh, and he has the revolver in the side. Uh, so, Looking at the back of the packaging, of course, it's not going to be like the original packaging because they don't have a whole line of figures. Uh, what we do have here is a look at the other products that are upcoming. So like I mentioned, there is that deluxe gallery diorama from the um, Temple of Doom, which we'll be showing to you as soon as that is released. There is the Premier Collection statue, and this thing looks quite amazing. Uh, he has a swappable hand, so you could put the MacGuffin of whatever movie is in there. So he has the the uh, Havito's idol, he has the Shankara stone, and then he has the Holy Grail, so you can switch out that right hand so he's holding whatever you want, so he can be indie from each of those movies. I know there's slight costume change in the shirt and the tie and etc., but he'll just be standard indie with the leather jacket there. There is a line of minibus coming out. Uh, right here you can see Henry Jones Sr. Uh, and there's also uh, two versions of the Indiana Jones bust as well with the torch. There is going to be a Legends in 3D, uh, Indiana Jones. And there is that awesome idol bank that we already showed you guys. You can check out that video. So just giving you kind of a heads up, a little look at all the products upcoming that we've shown you at the various shows that we've been at in the past year. But why don't we crack this guy open and check him out. And then we'll check out how he compares to the uh, release of the Comic-Con exclusive Map Room Indiana Jones set. All right, well, this might be the first Jumbo I've done on this channel. So if you're not familiar with how the Jumbo figures work, they're on giant resealable blister cards. So in the back, you're just going to have these little circular um, stickers that are sealing the blister card together. So you can just peel those off, pop open the blister, and then you take out the, uh, the card. Now, to me, this is what is really worth keeping here is the card backs. And they're unpunched. A lot of people love the unpunched look to them because it is near impossible to keep a <laughs> huge display of these in their blister cards. You would need like a warehouse. Um, I could not fit it in this room. I have a whole bedroom here dedicated to um, not just doing these films, but also my display of characters. You may have seen in some of the other videos, I have a lot of Kenner display and uh, other displays, but I mean, I'm at capacity. This cannot fit in a, in a room. <laughs> like uh, I have, I don't know, like 60 jumbos uh, around me you can see there. 
and uh, 60 of these cards is too much room. So well, I don't keep the blisters, but if you wanted to, you could always take the figure out and then reseal it. So they give you that option. Uh, so, um, but like I said, uh, I'm perfectly fine with tossing these. Now with the uh, jumbos, they're always gonna be secured in with something. And in this one, they're using these little plastic straps. Sometimes they go with the wire tie-ins. Uh, in this instance, they went with the plastic straps, so it's a little bit easier. Uh, to, to just cut these out with some sprue cutters. Uh, I prefer going from the back because I don't want to damage the product. If you try to go from the front, you might end up scratching the paint. Uh, so let's see, I got ones around the legs. There's two around the arms. Let's see if that does it. Um, I see one more in there, but that one is just securing the pistol to the, the waist here. Uh, so I will just pull this through. But while I'm doing this, you get a nice 360 here of our Indy. And you can see him sporting his little jacket here uh, in his hat. And his um, he has the same uh, look, essentially, as that Kenner figure, where he can bend those legs, which is unique for the Jumbos. Um, as I've shown you the other Jumbos on the, our, our other channel, uh, they don't have their straight leg. That was the whole Kenner line. They didn't have the articulating legs, uh, which really sucked in vehicles sometimes, but they, they made it work. But these legs do articulate, which is great. Uh, he's stamped on the back, uh, LFL 1982. Um, so consistent with the, the figure line there. And he has his two accessories. So the first accessory is the pistol. And we'll give you some close-ups in a moment. Uh, so he has that pistol here in a functional holster, just like the original. And that pistol can go in his, his right hand here. Now, like I said, the, the hand does not have that um, spring-loaded feature where you could push it down and it will shoot back up. It's just a regular articulating hand. So you could put the, the, that weapon in there, just like a Kenner figure. They don't hold exactly <laughs> perfectly. Uh, Kenner was notorious for the, the, the weapons never, like, you know, sufficiently lining up there uh, like modern figures do. So they just kind of like drifted in the, uh, the hand. You'd have to kind of awkwardly position them at an angle to get them to be in there. Like you're kind of clutching it like this, not like a, a real person would hold a weapon. Um, but that was consistent with the toys at the time. Uh, they were not that great. Um, so I, uh, I admire how they, they kept that sort of design to them because after all these are capturing the magic of those old toys just in a gigantic form. <laughs> so the real utility of them is the displayability and um, I think they look great, particularly that map room indie set. Uh, but if you missed out on that and you do want yourself an indie, this is a great chance to get them because this is a wide release. Uh, and then he has his whip, which was essentially just like uh, some twine or string here with this little peg at the back for you to hold. Um, so you could slip that into his hand here and then he could do um, whip action again. If he had the hand, it would let you uh, shoot the arm up and down um, while you unfurled that whip. And I have not an original here, but this is the one from the uh, Hasbro reboot. So you can see the, the arm function here where it moves uh, as you do that. So um, yeah, basically you could see how that would function with the revolver here. So uh, pretty close. <laughs> this is, I think, using the original mold. Um, so you get a sense of how close this looks. So the other fun feature you could do with the, the whip here is you could sort of curl it back up like it was in the, uh, the package there before I un untied it. And then you could mount it on his hip right here. So we could have that whip and then like a little display mode. So very nice. I mean, for the time, 1982, a lot going on with this. Um, if you know the history of a lot of the Kenner figures, I like looking back at the Star Wars line. They didn't really have holsters um, on the figures until uh, Return of the Jedi. So like 83, 84, when those figure lines were out. Uh, the first like kind of holster was on that Han Hoth and you could stick the uh, sort of the grip of the weapon into the opening of the holster and it, it didn't really fit into the holster but it would stick there when you, you stuck the weapon into the grip and it would just kind of sit on his, his thigh that way. So that was the earliest holster as I recall in uh, the Lucasfilm series of figures. Um, but yeah, 
Uh, looking at the rest of him, he, he has head articulation. It's just a little tricky because it's wearing in here. So he's got some head articulation, he's got the arm articulation, he's got the thigh articulation, and then he's got that knee articulation. So the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points on this guy with the, with the additional uh, articulation on the knees. So um, that is your your quick overview of, of I want to say Han, of Indy here <laughs> from the same actor. Uh, and I think he looks great. Uh, I just love how they, they brought this guy back into this line. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Jumbos, so to see a Jumbo version of Indiana Jones was just natural. I hope we get the whole line, honestly, because um, Hasbro stopped. They only did like, uh, I don't know, six, six or so figures. Uh, there was like four left that they didn't do. Um, or five, I think, if you count the bonus ones, something somewhere around there. Maybe a couple, maybe there were thirteen. Maybe I'm not getting that right. They did uh, one, two, three, four, five. Um, yeah, so there were maybe seven more, um, or something like. It depends. You count that Marion from the basket. That wasn't really a full figure. Um, so yeah, so they stopped with that. They did a bunch of ones from. Um, Temple of Doom, and they did uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, not Raiders of the Lost Ark, I'm sorry, uh, The Last Crusade. There were never figures for those two lines, so those are sort of like imaginative figures. Uh, but they didn't finish the Raiders line, so it would be kind of cool if uh, Diamond Select picked it up. They did the full Raiders line, and then we could actually have a full line. Uh, and if they did more playsets, I'd love to see a Well of Souls playset. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, this is early. If you guys buy more of these guys, I mean, if everything does as well as the map room set did, then of course they'll make more because the demand is clearly there. Uh, so why don't we come in a little closer and I'll show you more great detail of this figure and I'll go grab Map Room Indy. Uh, well, not Map Room Indy, but Indy from the Map Room play set. As, as you know, he's not Map Room Indy. He's not wearing the robes. And we'll compare the two side by side to see if there's any differences. So again, this guy is quite large, so I really have to zoom out so you can see him. But uh, here's that great close-up detail of Indy here. And you can see all that design work, uh, even at the time of capturing all that little detail on his jacket, on his shirt, the little buttons there, his pants, the belt, the, uh, the holster here, uh, even the buckle on his fedora. I mean, a lot of great detail. You got to admire these old Kenner style figures. They're kind of more works of art than they are action figures. Uh, even his shoes, nicely done there. Um, so that is the, the Indy, and uh, I'll show you the, the pistol here again. It's just that standard revolver he has, and then that fits nicely in that holster, so I like that too. And then the whip, of course, which is just string attached to this little um, this end piece here. So comparing him back to Mapper Mindy, he is the same figure. Not a single thing different here. He stamped 1982, same look, nothing different here. So this is just the wide release version of the same Indiana Jones figure. Uh, so if you missed them the first time, this is your chance to get them again. Uh, they're recycling that mold and using it twice over here because uh, like we said, uh, when they were looking back and when they produced this set, they didn't know how far this line was gonna go. So they didn't wanna invest, probably didn't wanna invest in um, doing tool different, two, uh, two different toolings one indie, one map room indie. So they just kept this the same indie and used it twice. A little controversial. I know we would have all loved to have map room indie go with that set. Would have just taken it over the top and given us a reason to get two more indies. So if you already have that map room set, the only advantage to getting this indie is going to be that card back. Um, so that just gives you that great classic style card back. So if you love the art and you love, you know, indie uh, and all things Kenner, then it's worth it. Um, if you just wanted a Jumbo Indie and you already picked up that map room set, then you already got the same Indie. So you have the figure. Um, this is not necessary. Defer to you. Uh, if you're a big fan of these card backs and you just like the aesthetic to it, or you just want to display it in the giant clamshell, I totally think it's worth it. I mean, it's a great figure. And if you definitely, if you missed it the first time around, this is your chance to get him now. He's great. Um, he's one of the better Jumbos I've seen out there. Um, again, I love Jumbos here. I do a lot on Rebel Scum with Jumbos, so check those videos out as well. Uh, but this Indie Jumbo is definitely awesome and worth your time if you did not get the um, uh, get the map room set. And if you did and you love card backs, then this Indie is really completing it because it's giving you that uh, very nice Kenner aesthetic. All right, adventurers. Well, that wraps us uh, for our latest Indiana Jones video. Of course, feel free to check out the other ones we did. We covered the first two waves of the adventure series. Maybe we'll do the third. <laughs> I'll see if I, I, I kept time to go grab it and we'll check that out. 
Uh, we've done a uh, map room set that you can go check out. I keep wanting to call them map room indie. The <laughs> map room set with the Indiana Jones Jumbo, this guy right here. Uh, so you can check out that video. Some people still have it in stock. I think it's sold out in Diamond Select and it's sold out in Entertainment Earth. I'll see if I can find a link. Um, it, it might be a big bad, so you can go check that out. Uh, so that was an amazing set. 100% worth picking that up. Uh, this guy is also 100% worth picking up if you didn't get him yet. Uh, so this is a nice way. If you don't want to pay $120 for the map room set, and you could just pay $80 for the jumbo, uh, or you could use our discount and pay closer to $70 for the jumbo, or you could take advantage of the discount that I believe uh, some sites are still having, like 25% off, and get them even cheaper. So now is the chance to stock up on these things. So they're in stock, worth grabbing. Check it out. We'll have a link up for you guys. Uh, so you can pick him up right now. And I think it's, uh, it'd be free shipping if it's over um, $39 or whatever at Entertainment Earth. So you get free shipping too, which isn't bad because this box is huge. <laughs> so uh, definitely check that out. We're going to have more indie uh, coming up in December. Like I said, there are other gallery dioramas. Some of those are out now. And other stuff is hitting stores soon. So as soon as we get our hands on it, we will show it to you guys. And you can decide whether or not it's for you. The answer is probably going to be yes. <laughs> we got to see it in person at uh, Comic-Con. And we also got to see it in person when we were in London at Celebration. So you can check out those videos on Cool Toy Review for Comic-Con. And London Celebrations on Rebel Scum, our partner site. So you can check out those two videos if you want to see, um, see some coverage of those events. And uh, these things a little bit closer, although they were behind glass at the time. So this is our first time getting them in our hand and being able to see them. Uh, so definitely worth checking out if you want to see what's to come in the Indiana Jones line. Uh, so that is all for this time. Like, subscribe, and follow. And we will see you next time, adventurers.